Hello everyone, today we are going to be going through the personnel, uh, all personnel, and discussing the importance of each personnel position, uh, what you want to look for in it, and essentially how to optimize your personnel to be the most effective possible. So the first thing we want to look at here is, or actually I'll cover a couple of other things. So first off is scouting. I have a separate video for scouting. I'd recommend looking at it. I'm not going to dive into scouting because it's completely different than every other personnel position. You have one for your entire franchise, and essentially with scouts, they are going to uh, rate players, so try to determine how strong each player is, or how good each player is at each specific thing. But anyways, today we're going to be primarily talking about coaches. Uh, I will start, though, with trainers, because... This is uh, potentially one of the most important things in your franchise. So trainers control the probability, or they do not control, but they influence the probability that your players will get hurt and the likelihood that a player will either suffer a setback or suffer a benefit, or I guess gain a benefit in their recovery when coming back from injuries. So setbacks and recoveries, or speedy recoveries happen very sparsely, so even with the best trainers, uh, it's not that much of a benefit to have high rehab. So generally speaking, you're going to be looking at the right side of this trainer page, the prevent injuries and the fatigue recovery. And this fatigue recovery is the secondary aspect of a trainer, which is how quickly players will uh, recover or how much fatigue players recover each day, essentially. So players, as they play tire, this increases the probability that they get hurt. It decreases their effectiveness while playing. So having higher fatigue recovery means your players can play more often, more effectively with a lower injury risk. Uh, generally very effective, probably the most or second most important thing a trainer has, actually. So I generally like to start by fatigue recovery. Uh, and then just find player or trainers who are good at preventing injuries otherwise. So you'll notice here that there are two trainers that are particularly good with fatigue recovery and injury prevention, and that is going to be Tim Booker and Rick Jamison. Uh, and these are generally the two trainers that I would consider to be the best in live starts, although there are other options, as you can see here. So anyways, there are a couple of different injuries that players can suffer. And players have their own injury pronuses for each type of injury. Different positions, like pitchers, for example, suffer arm injuries much more frequently than position players. Um, but there are four types of injuries. There are leg injuries, arm injuries, back injuries, and other injuries. And each is categorized as such. So if you have higher probability of an arm injury, um, that will not affect the likelihood that you get a leg injury, for example. Her trainer who's excellent at preventing arm injuries but sucks at preventing leg injuries, you're going to see more arm injuries, but you're not going to see a lot of leg injuries, if that makes any sense. Uh, essentially, the goal with the trainers is to neutralize the most common types of injuries. So the reason that I think Rick Jamison is generally by far the best trainer in live starts is because he is legendary at preventing arm injuries, which are generally the most devastating type of injuries and the most... Um, probable for pitchers so he's very good at keeping your pitchers healthy he obviously has very good fatigue recovery and he's also outstanding at preventing leg injuries which is the second most common type of injury or not common but the second most devastating type of injury to players usually uh, back injuries tend to be for less time and are less damaging overall and other injuries are the lowest usually but essentially what i prioritize in trainers for trainers in orders, prevent arms, fatigue recovery, prevent legs, and then prevent back and other with rehab in last. But you'll notice that the best thing about Jamison is that he's actually good or better in every category, and that is about ideal. So if we look at a guy like Stan Conti, he's at least decent in every category or better. Uh, he's not necessarily the best trainer, but he is certainly solid. And you'll notice with Booker that he is, other than with rehabbing arms and legs, which is uh, admittedly not ideal rehabbing arms and legs is definitely more important especially arms than uh, back and other but you'll notice that he even is pretty good for the most part across the board so trainers that are good at everything are ideal but you definitely want guys who specialize in preventing arms and fatigue recovery when possible 
Now you have one for your entire franchise, so you only need the single trainer, but uh, it is a critical position to fill, and it can make a decent amount of difference on your player's health throughout a season. All right, anyways, uh, the next thing that we're going to cover is coaches. I'm actually going to cover the assistant general manager last for reasons that I will explain later. And the first thing that we're going to go over here is the manager. So the manager is in charge of making decisions on your teams and will be the primary person responsible for general player development. Uh, there are coaches that are responsible for specific types of development, but the manager in general is going to kind of influence everything. So the first thing that you need to consider with a manager is the development ability, the mechanics ability, and the aging ability. So the development is how likely players are to improve their current ratings on your roster. It's more or less a modifier to that. So it won't be a huge impact, but it will be significant. Mechanics is how likely a player is to add potential to their ratings. And aging is how uh, it's essentially an impact on how or it reduces the amount that players will lose when they lose ratings. It's not necessarily just for older players. Younger players can lose ratings too, and handle aging will help reduce the impact of players that lose ratings. Now, generally speaking, development and mechanics are far more important than aging. Uh, at the major league level and upper minors, development is far and away the most important rating of all. Uh, at the lower minors, mechanics is quite important as well because it will help your younger prospects who are more prone to get uh, additional potential achieve said potential, or rather add to it. Now, the secondary thing about a manager is that they will have these strategy tendencies. This can kind of matter for your minor leagues, but for the major leagues, you'll generally have a good amount of control over your strategies. And these strategies aren't going to be super critical uh they are definitely important and they definitely do help or affect your team i should say but it's not the biggest thing ever and the third thing about managers that you're going to notice is they will have these bars here and this is true for every coach they will have favor veterans versus favor prospects favor pitching versus hitting defense versus offense speed versus power average versus obp and this is essentially uh they're more or who they're more likely to use to some extent, who they're more likely to be effective developing. So essentially, uh, managers, I generally prefer favor prospects, since that will allow them to help prospects develop a little bit more easily than guys who are more on the favor veteran side. If you have a hitting coach, it's better to have favor hitting over favor pitching. But obviously, this stuff is very secondary, especially for managers who are going to work with everybody. Uh, I will explain things more in depth later, but the only thing you need to know is that I would consider favor prospects versus veterans more or less a tiebreaker, or in very extreme cases, like if this was a red thing, like the favor speed versus power, then maybe that's a little bit of a concern. Uh, but generally speaking, these things are not too important. So with managers, these three things, development mechanics and aging, are the only things you really want to consider for the manager. At the major league level, you're very rarely going to have mechanics be important. It's usually good to pick up a manager with strong mechanical uh, balance when you can, uh, but you really want to prioritize development and aging It becomes the secondary factor because you're going to have more veterans than guys who are about 20 or whatever. So uh, looking at this free agent pool of managers, uh, I definitely like Joe Madden best for the major league level. He is legendary in development, which means that he's going to be very impactful on helping out your younger player, or not your younger players, but all of your players add to their current ratings. He is outstanding in mechanics, which is a, more of a bonus than a necessity, uh, but he will absolutely help your players add to their potential more than they would otherwise. And for the aging, he is excellent, so he's going to help your players lose less ratings when they do lose their ratings. Uh, but anyways, Madden... Just a pretty effective manager. This favor of veterans versus prospects is really the only thing on him that I'm not particularly a fan of, but he is very effective. Now, for your upper minors, um, aging matters a little bit. Mechanics is still more important than it, and development. And when I say upper minors, I mean double A and triple A, uh, where you're going to have your guys who are right or making the jump to the major leagues in the near future. So, development is absolutely far and away the most important thing in the upper minors. 
and narrowly followed by mechanics, and aging has a little bit of an effect. In your medium minors, which I would consider lower minors, like a A, high A, but not quite rookie league, development and mechanics are about equal in their importance. You really want to make sure that you have players being able to develop current ranks at all levels of the minors, frankly, especially in OTP modern era where it's hard enough to get to the or the potential as it is, uh, aging becomes completely useless. And then at the lower minors, I'd say mechanics actually slightly overtakes development because your guys are so young, you can definitely improve their potential more easily. So for the lower minors, I'd be looking at guys like John Farrell or uh, maybe even guys like Joe Girardi or Mike Shosha who are extremely good at mechanics uh, and still viable in development, although I would certainly like to see better than good if possible. Anyways, that covers managers. Next up is the bench coach. And they function exactly like managers, actually. Um, if you are if you are running as a GM only, then the bench coach has a secondary aspect that I will get into later that then becomes less important because the manager is going to handle most of this development stuff. But essentially, the goal is to have the same things as the manager at the same levels, but the bench coach, of course, only exists at the major league level. So uh, another thing you can do with the bench coach, if you are running as a GM only, is you can actually compliment your manager. So let's say Joe Madden, you hire to be your manager. He's legendary in development and outstanding in mechanics, but he's not so good in aging. So maybe you want a bench coach who's really good at aging. So maybe you'd go for John Farrell or one of these, uh, or maybe Jingbo uh, Hsiao, somebody who's going to definitely help out on that weakness and still not necessarily lag behind on the others. But again, the bench coach, far less important than the manager, except in the case where you are GM and manager, in which case the bench coach at the major league level essentially replaces the manager in terms of functionality. All right, next up, let's cover hitting coaches. And there's only one thing that matters for them, teaching. This is essentially how effective the uh, hitting coach is at improving players hitting ratings changes so we've got here two legendaries on the free agent market and the secondary thing that i would look at for hitting coaches is favor veterans versus favor prospects and the tertiary would be favor hitting and offense versus favor pitching and defense you definitely want these a little further over because that will help them build better relationships with their players that they're actually going to be working with and it will help them a little bit developing those players overall uh, you might also kind of want power over speed, but it's not a big deal. And generally speaking, those things are definitely secondary. The ability of the hitting coach to teach hitting is the far and away most important thing to consider with them. Next up is pitching coaches, and they work exactly the same way, but for pitchers. And once again, I'm looking at the same kinds of things. I want pitching coaches who are going to teach pitching incredibly well. I want pitching coaches who preferably favor prospects, but it's not critical. And the tertiary point would be favor pitching over favor hitting. Defense, speed, power, offense, this this kind of thing doesn't really matter at all for pitching coaches. Uh, it can be a little bit important, but it's not critical. Now, there's one other point that I need to mention for hitting and pitching coaches. So we'll just look at Miguel Satenia here, who's both a hitting and pitching coach. They have uh, preferences, so there's the hitting coach focus and the pitching coach focus. This will determine what kinds of players the coach works well with. So for example, if the hitting coach focus is patience, then the hitting coach is going to work particularly well with high I players, and they will be more effective at developing I than other hitting ratings. If the focus is contact, then they'll be good at developing BABIP and avoid Ks, but they'll be less effective, or not necessarily less effective, and they'll be more effective with guys who have those higher ratings. So uh, another secondary point of importance is you don't just want to have the same focus of pitching coach or hitting coach at every level of your minors, because then you might have some types of players who will not develop hardly at all, and you'll have some ratings that will not get developed. So it's important to mix it up at least a little bit so that you're not just developing a homogenous, uh, specialized, but poor overall prospect core. 
So you'll notice here that Satania is actually neutral, which means he doesn't work better with anybody, but he doesn't work worse with anybody either in both hitting and pitching coach focus. Neutral is the safe bet. Uh, I generally like to have neutral for my major league teams if I don't have a particular minor, or if I'm not underbalanced in the minor leagues at a certain thing. Sometimes I like power pitchers for my pitching coach at the major league level and power hitters for my hitting coach focus because those are the two most impactful things to add to. And um, those are generally a large portion of the modern player pool anyways. And uh, so it can be a little bit more effective, but I'm generally not going to be looking for a finesse pitching coach at the major league level or a... I guess contact or patience are both viable at the major league level. But anyways, just to cover each different specialty here. For the hitting coaches, you have contact, patience, and power. Contact is avoid Ks and BABIP. As I mentioned, power is uh, gap power and home run power. And then patience is I. So patience is generally going to be uh, not necessarily smaller pool players, but it's going to because I is just one rating versus two for the others, and it's not as important as power or BABIP. Uh, it's it's generally a little bit less effective overall, but it is definitely critical to develop your player's eye, so don't completely discard patience coaches. For pitching coaches, you have power, um, I believe it's ground ball, and finesse. Power pitchers will focus on stuff and velocity. Finesse pitchers will focus on control, and ground ball pitchers will focus on movement and ground ball percentage. So once again, finesse pitchers are, or finesse pitching coaches rather, are generally less important to have than ground ballers or um, power pitching coaches, but they're still effective to have. That covers most of the major coaches. So the last thing that we have, I believe, for the major league level only is your first base and third base coaches. So the first base and third base coaches, along with technically your manager and I believe your bench coach, uh, can are responsible for teaching catching, infield, outfield, and running to your players at the major league level. So obviously the most important thing is the defense. You're generally not actually going to see much defense, defensive rating improvement among your players, no matter how good your coaches are. But this will definitely help prevent players from aging more quickly. And sometimes it can benefit you. So ultimately, it's good to go for the highest catching infield and outfield possible, somebody with legendary in all three, because there are a hand or a decent number of people with that, um, so that you can have somebody versatile, essentially. You're able to teach, each coach can teach two out of three, or excuse me, two out of four of these aspects, so having somebody who can teach any three, two of these three is definitely important. A secondary thing to note here is you want in-game running. This is something else that your base coaches control. It'll slightly improve the decision-making of your uh, base runners. So the, my absolute go-to here is Scott Austin, who is not only um, legendary in each three of teach, catching, infield, and defense. He is also outstanding at teaching running, so you can use him to teach running fairly frequently. And he's also... Um, Pretty good at favoring prospects. So his in-game running is only average, so I like him for my first base coach, but he is certainly a solid pickup to get. Just to clarify here, the reason that you want Austin at first base instead of third base and why in-game running is more important at third base is because you're going to have more decisions that are influenced by your third base coach than by your first base coach, just like in real baseball. Now, for your third base coach, you actually want to sort by teach, or excuse me, in-game running, since Scott Austin is probably going to be teaching running. And you want to find somebody who's both good at in-game running and also capable of teaching some of these other things. So we've got here Jeff Fire, who's generally my go-to for the third base coach. He's outstanding in uh, in-game running, so he's going to help your guys make better decisions. And he's also legendary in both teach catching and outfield defense, so he's more than capable of teaching two out of the four categories as well. Uh, so, yeah, that's generally what I would consider the most effective thing to do for in-game running. But naturally, if you can't find somebody who's effective at in-game running, it's more important to have teaching things than it is to have in-game effectiveness. Now, I do believe that covers all the personnel. I'm going to quickly take a look at the front office to double check. Uh, I believe the only thing we have left is the assistant general manager, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. So there is uh, one important, and we'll actually go here, 
thing to consider with your staff in OTP now. Uh, they've recently added the staff cohesion aspect to the game, which is essentially how well your staff get along. Much like with um, chemistry for your team, which determines how effective they are, staff cohesion will slightly affect how effective your staff is with your franchise. So since it, every single staff member is critically important and you don't really focus on cohesion, uh, though there is one staff position left where cohesion is the only thing that matters, and that is your assistant general manager. Now, like I said earlier, bench coach sometimes can be it, so you would just filter by the personality uh, that they would work well with or the personality that they want uh, in your bench coach, and then you find the best option there if you uh, are playing as GM only. Uh, but anyways... You're just going to sort by the personality that a lot of people work well with, and you're going to find a positive that is a lot of the managers on your staff. That's literally all it is with the assistant general manager. It has no other use. So just boosting your staff cohesion is the most critical thing. The, general, the assistant general manager, for those who are wondering, will occasionally suggest players that you want to target in trades or free agency and will suggest trades to you every now and then. They'll give you their thoughts on trades, but they're not effective at any of those tasks. They're worse than, or they're about as effective as the AI. They are essentially the AI. So generally speaking, it's not really worth uh, having a general manager or assistant GM who does literally anything. It's the only thing that they can do that is beneficial is improve your staff cohesion. Anyways, guys, that just about covers everything with staff cohesion. Let me know if you have any questions or if you would like uh, any more information. Again, I'd recommend checking out my scouting video since that's a completely different field to consider uh, in addition to scouting and, or excuse me, in addition to other personnel. And it is, of course, a personnel type in itself. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you on the next one.